Could a Formula One car drive upside down in a tunnel? You hear people say it, but is it true? Well, the science says yes. When an F1 car hits about 150 kilometers per hour, it generates an amount of downward force that is almost equal to its own weight. At top speed, that force is over five times more powerful. So theoretically, yes, it could stick to the ceiling. That incredible force is what we're here to talk about today. It's called downforce, and it's the heart of aerodynamics. Downforce, sticking the car to the road. So what is downforce? It's an aerodynamic force that pushes the car vertically down onto the track as it moves forward. The easiest way to think about it is like an airplane wing, but flipped upside down. A plane's wing creates lift to fly. An F1 car's wings are designed upside down to create negative lift or downforce to stick the car to the road. This gives the car a huge amount of grip. More grip means the drivers can carry more speed through corners without sliding off into a barrier. Every single part of the car that comes into contact with the air is actually creating some amount of downforce. But here's the problem, and it's the central challenge for every F1 team. Creating downforce also creates drag. Drag is the air resistance that slows the car down, fighting against it as it moves forward. It's terrible for top speed on the long straights, and it burns huge amounts of fuel. So the entire game for F1 aerodynamicists is to find the perfect balance. They need to create as much downforce as possible for the corners, but with as little drag as possible for the straights. This balance is called aerodynamic efficiency, and getting it right is the difference between winning and losing. The ideal setup changes for every single track. A high-speed track with long straights like Monza needs a low downforce setup to minimize drag. But a tight, twisty circuit with lots of slow corners requires maximum downforce for grip. So how do teams actually generate and control this invisible force? It starts with the most obvious parts you see on the car. Front and rear wings, creating grip from air. The front and rear wings are essential for generating downforce. The front wing is the first part of the car to meet the air, so its job is not just to create downforce itself, but also to guide the airflow to the rest of the car. The rear wing's more straightforward. Its main job is to create a ton of downforce at the back of the car. Both wings work like an upside down airplane wing. They are shaped to make the air pressure above the wing higher than the air pressure below it. This pressure difference is what pushes the wing and therefore the whole car down onto the track. Teams are constantly tweaking the wings. For a high speed circuit, they'll use smaller wings that are angled almost flat. This allows air to pass over them with less resistance, which means less drag. But on a twisty circuit where grip is everything, the wings will be much larger and angled more steeply against the airflow. This turns that passing air into additional weight, literally pushing the tires into the ground for more traction in the corners. Now, the downside is more wing angle equals more downforce, but it also means more drag. The team see this as a necessary evil because the grip you gain in the corners is worth more than the straight line speed you lose. Okay, so the main surfaces of the wings are doing the heavy lifting, but if you look closely at the ends of the wings, you'll see these intricate, complex vertical panels. They aren't just there for looks or to hold the wing together. These are the end plates and they have an important job of their own. Wing end plates. What do they actually do? The wing end plates are the parts located at the very ends of the front and rear wings. Their main job is to help create downforce and add stability, especially at high speeds. They are designed to manage the airflow around the sides of the wings and reduce turbulence. Think about it like this. You have high pressure air on top of the wing and low pressure air underneath. At the edge of the wing, that high pressure air naturally wants to spill over into the low pressure zone. When that happens, it creates a swirling vortex of messy air and that vortex reduces the wing's efficiency. The end plates basically act like walls to stop that from happening. But they also have another job, directing the airflow. The front wing end plates guide the air away from the front tires and toward other aerodynamic surfaces, like the floor of the car. By managing the air and improving the car's streamline, the end plates help the car generate maximum downforce and perform at its best. So for the teams, getting the end plates right is a huge deal. They are always testing new designs to find any tiny advantage. So we have the wings and end plates, all working to push the car down. But in 2022, when the new ground effect rules came in, teams ran into a very public and very violent problem. A problem that made these multi-million dollar cars look like they were bouncing down the straights completely out of control. That problem was porpoising. By the way, if you like learning about F1 like this, feel free to hit subscribe. All right, let's get back to it. Porpoising, the violent bounce. Porpoising is when the front of the car starts bouncing up and down at high speed. It was a massive challenge for a lot of teams during the 2022 season. The reason it happens is that the new generation cars create so much downforce from the floor that they get sucked closer and closer to the ground. But if they get too close, 
the airflow under the car gets choked off, or stalls. Suddenly, the downforce is gone. The car's suspension then pushes it back up. As soon as it rises, the airflow reattaches. The powerful downforce comes back, and it gets sucked down all over again. This cycle repeats itself, causing that violent bouncing. It's a huge problem because it disrupts the airflow and reduces downforce, making the car unstable and difficult for the driver. To fix it, teams have to do things like adjust the ride height or change the setup of the front and rear wings to try and stabilize the car's aerodynamics. This bouncing problem highlighted how critical the airflow under the car is. But how do you even begin to understand something you can't see? How do you diagnose a problem with invisible air? Well, F1 teams have some pretty cool and sometimes bizarre looking tools for just that purpose. F1 Aero Rake, the weird fences on the cars. You've probably seen these during testing or practice sessions. They're those big, weird looking fence-like structures that teams attach to the car, usually behind the wheels or at the rear. These are called Aero Rakes. An Aero Rake is basically a big grid of tubes called pitot tubes that measure airflow. Each tube gives the engineers a data point on the speed and pressure of the air at that exact spot. By putting them all together, they can build a 3D map of the airflow around the car. This gives teams incredible insight into the car's aerodynamics. They can see if a new part is working as expected, or they can use it to diagnose a problem like porpoising. The data they get from the aero rakes helps them optimize both downforce and drag. Teams constantly making tiny adjustments to the car based on what these rakes are telling them. Flovis, the bright green paint. The other tool you'll often see is a brightly colored fluorescent paint that teams slather all over the car. This is called Flovis, which is short for flow visualization paint. Here's how it works. They apply the thick, oily paint to a part of the car, like the front wing or the side pods. The driver then goes out for a lap. As the air flows over the car, it pushes the paint, leaving streaks that show the engineers exactly how the air is moving over the surface. They can see where the flow is smooth and attached, and where it might be separating from the bodywork, creating turbulence and drag. It's a simple but incredibly effective way to visualize the invisible. By using Flovis, teams can fine-tune their designs to reduce drag, increase downforce, and ultimately make the car faster. These tools, the rakes and the paint, give teams a vital snapshot of what's happening on the track. But all the real hard work, the core design of the car, happens way before it ever touches the asphalt. It happens in a top-secret high-tech lab that is the key to all aerodynamic design. The floor of an F1 car, the real source of grip. While the wings get all the attention, the single most important component for aerodynamics on a modern F1 car is the floor. In fact, about 50% of a car's total downforce is generated by the aerodynamics under the car, and most of that comes from the floor and the diffuser. The floor works like one enormous upside-down wing. It's shaped with special tunnels called Venturi tunnels that are designed to speed up the air flowing underneath the car. When you speed up air, its pressure drops. This creates a massive low pressure zone under the car, which sucks the car down to the track. This principle is called ground effect. And this method is super efficient. It creates huge amounts of grip, which means more speed through corners. But it has another massive benefit because it's not relying on big complicated wings on top of the car. It produces less turbulent or dirty air behind it. This is important. That dirty air from a car in front is what makes it so hard for another car to follow closely through corners. Because the dirty air ruins the performance of the following car's own wings. By creating more downforce from the floor, the cars can follow each other more closely, which leads to better racing. Of course, the floor's design has to follow strict FIA regulations about its size and location. The wind tunnel, F1's secret lab. The wind tunnel is an essential tool for every F1 team it's a laboratory where they can simulate airflows and study the aerodynamic properties of their car long before it's even built. Here's how it works. Teams build a super detailed scale model of their car. The rules say this model can be no more than 60% of the size of the real car. They put this model inside the tunnel and giant fans blast air over it to copy exactly what it's like on the track. Inside the tunnel, the model is covered in sensors that measure all the forces acting on it. The goal is simple, to find a design that reduces drag as much as possible while increasing downforce as much as possible. The wind tunnel is where aerodynamic concepts are born, tested and perfected. It is instrumental in improving lap times. All this incredible effort in the wind tunnel, all this focus on the floor, the wings, the end plates, it all goes into building a car that has to fit within a very strict set of rules. Not just in terms of its aerodynamics, but also its physical size and weight. And some of these numbers might surprise you. Measurements of an F1 car, a heavyweight fighter. Today's Formula One cars are the heaviest they have ever been. The regulations state that a car must have a minimum weight 
of 800 kilograms. That includes the driver and the dry weather tires, but it does not include fuel. A full tank of fuel holds about 110 kilograms. So at the start of a race, a car actually weighs around 910 kilograms. Teams are obsessed with weight. They often struggle just to get down to the minimum weight. You'll even see cars with patches of raw carbon fiber where the team has scraped off paint and stickers just to save a few grams. In some cases, drivers will even race with less water on board to save a tiny bit of weight. To put this in perspective, back in 2008, an F1 car weighed less than 600 kilograms. That's a difference of 200 kilos. The weight has gone up because the cars are bigger. The V6 hybrid power units are heavier than the old V8s. Bigger wheels and tires and new safety features like the halo have been added. The halo alone weighs seven kilograms and the power unit is a massive 151 kilograms. As for size, the cars are also huge. An F1 car has a maximum width of two meters or about six and a half feet. It stands about 90 centimeters tall and 5.63 meters or 18.5 feet in length. All of these components, the wings, the floor, the bodywork, are designed to manage the air as it flows over and under the car. But what happens to the air at the very end? There's one final critical piece of aerodynamic hardware at the back that has one last job to do. This is the diffuser. Diffuser F1, the final aero trick. The diffuser is the aerodynamic component at the very back of the car, right at the exit of the floor. Its job is to manage the fast moving air coming from underneath the car and help it merge smoothly with the slower moving air around the car. It does this by expanding vertically. As the air passes through the diffuser, it slows down and its pressure increases, which helps to accelerate the airflow under the car even more. This creates a powerful vacuum effect, pressing the car to the ground. This is essential for grip and stability, especially in high-speed corners. Like everything else, the diffuser's design is restricted by the rules, but teams are always trying to find creative ways to optimize it. Teams have been very clever with this in the past. In 2009, the Braun GP team showed up with an ingenious double diffuser. It improved their downforce and was a key factor in them winning the championship that year. It was so good that other teams scrambled to copy it, and the FIA changed the rules for the 2010 season. A few years later, F1 teams perfected something called the blown diffuser. This system used the hot exhaust gases from the engine and directed them into the diffuser to energize the airflow and generate even more downforce. It was incredibly effective just like the double diffuser. But eventually the FIA changed the rules again in 2011. These examples show the constant cat and mouse game between F1 innovators and the rule makers. The diffuser is all about controlling the power of the air, but there's another diff on the car that's all about controlling the power from the engine. It has nothing to do with air, but it has everything to do with how the car gets through a corner without wasting a single bit of horsepower. Differentials in F1, getting power to the road, the differential, or diff for short, is a crucial part of the car's chassis and rear suspension. Its job is to distribute the engine's power between the two rear wheels. When a car goes around a corner, the outer wheel has to travel a longer distance than the inner wheel, so it needs to spin faster. The differential allows this to happen, which keeps the car stable and makes it easier to drive through corners. Engineers can tune the differential to optimize the car's performance and, importantly, to minimize tire wear. The way the power is distributed can have a big effect on how the tires degrade over a race stint. The limited slip differential is designed to keep the wheels from slipping. Another type of limited slip can actually lock the torque distribution and direct all the power to the wheel that has the most grip. It's another complex piece of engineering that is critical for getting the perfect lap. Bringing it all together. So there we have it. From the incredible suction of the ground effect floor to the precise adjustments of the front wing. Every single surface on a Formula One car is designed for one purpose, to control the air. It's a constant, never-ending battle for aerodynamic efficiency, a fight between downforce and drag, too much drag, and you're slow on the straights. Not enough downforce and you're slow in the corners. The perfect balance is everything. So next time you're watching a Grand Prix, I want you to look beyond the raw speed. Look at the cars as they dive into a corner, see them glued to the track, and know that it's an invisible force, a force equal to tons of weight, that's making it happen. When you see a car tuck in behind another on a straight, you'll see the slipstream in action. And when you see it struggle in the corners, you'll know it's fighting through dirty air. You won't just see cars going around a track anymore. You'll see this invisible battle playing out on every corner, on every straight. You'll see the genius, the compromises, and the incredible science that makes Formula One what it is today. You'll see the real race. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to see more Formula One stuff, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.